going to give you a moment to take a look at this funnel and read some of the headings. We will be covering many of these things in detail with exercises in other upcoming modules. This is to allow you to understand that searching for a job requires a strategy. Whatever you have been doing currently is also known as a strategy. You have to evaluate based on this funnel how effective you have been. Troubleshoot where your problem areas really are so that you are able to hone in and get better help to fine tuning. In order to do this, definitely we need to have some calmness in our hearts and minds. When we feel a sense of desperation, almost as if we are drowning, all we want to do is to grab onto something. And this type of an energy, which is very frantic, doesn't really help us in our job search. As you allow yourself to become more centered and grounded, you will begin to open your mind to the various parts of searching for a job. We were able to derive this funnel based on two things. One is our research on hiring processes, and two, the feedback and reports that are given to us by our previous participants and candidates. So with this resource base, we formulated a funnel. Now, will it 100% work? The answer is no. I think no one can give us a 100% assurance. But can I give you a very strong assurance that it works? The answer is yes. Sometimes you wouldn't have to go through so many stages. We have had candidates who had one meeting with the department head of a hiring company and within the next week, they got the offer and they got the job. So it all differs. But this is as long as the process is going to get. And we need to be good at each of these stages. So let's look at the next part, which is generating opportunities. How do you generate opportunities for yourself? There are some people who expect opportunities to be given to them. I'm afraid that type of a mental model doesn't really help. We have to think independently and be resourceful to get out there and find our own opportunities. Singapore, despite being a small island, consistently tries to reinvent and find new opportunities to survive. My grandparents came from India because they wanted to generate opportunities for themselves as well as their children. So generating opportunities does not only apply to finding a job, but it applies to pretty much everything else that we do in our life. i give you an example. If you really want to keep in touch with your friends, wouldn't you generate opportunities to make the meetings happen? Even if currently you do an online one, that is still known as generating an opportunity. When you turn up for a training like this, you are generating opportunities because you never know who you meet in this session and what you're going to learn. So the thing about generating opportunities at the end of the day is about the willingness to take action so that we can move forward. So on this slide, you can see some of the most common ones in terms of generating opportunities for a job search. Online portals, LinkedIn, recruitment agencies, as well as virtual career fairs and job fairs. Virtual career fairs have become more popular now than ever before because of the current pandemic situation. So besides this, is there anything else? In fact, in Singapore, we have many. And it might take a while to navigate through all of the different programs and schemes, but I strongly recommend that you head over to the Skills Future website to read and understand all the different types of assistance and programs that are offered. I won't be going into them in depth at this point, but I'll just name them 
you might find some of these familiar and some of it could be brand new. We have the career conversion program, which is to allow people to transit to a brand new organization and industry. It's almost like a matchmaking service where the agency will try to match make potential employers who are willing to take a newbie and train them up and also mature workers and professionals who want to have a career transition. The next will be the career support program where there is a part subsidy of the salary of a professional so that the hiring company will be incentivized to take them on board. The next is the adapt and grow initiative. We also have the open door program. Please do some research and I'll quiz you later on in the live modules. But that's not all. We also have things like the PMAX for individuals, which is once again part salary subsidizing, private providers placement program. There are a few appointed agencies that help to do this. We have the Skills Future Earn and Learn program, which is more applicable for younger candidates. And then we also have the Young Talent program. And new programs are coming up all the time in order to address emerging trends and new opportunities. So keep a lookout because you never know, you might find something that is the right fit for you. The next is to qualify these opportunities. So assuming now you are very good at generating opportunities and you have a lot coming your way, you need to have a systematic way to filter them. So briefly, understand how the recruitment process works gather information about the labor market, as well as understand the way you look for a job and how companies hire could be very different. Many of us will use job portals, but companies usually try to look for internal placement or referrals first. So understanding these things helps you to reduce the risk and perhaps having too many high expectations in placing for a opportunity. In another slide, you will also begin to see that once we move into the next phase, we need to be able to deliver value. So yay, you've gotten an opportunity to show something. First of all, your resume and your cover letter is what's going to be the first artifacts that the prospective employer will get in their hand to see whether or not they want to talk to you even more. So customizing it will be absolutely important. And we will cover in detail how to do that in this workshop. You also have to use things like the STAR framework when people ask you questions in an interview so that your answers are concise and impactful. The RISAC profiling as well as the competency mapping, the values, sorting, and many of these other assessments that we have recommended that you take will also help you to become much better in answering questions to that interviewer. Now, you need to maximize your opportunity by demonstrating your value, craft an outstanding resume and cover letter, understand things like the STAR framework and RISAC. So this is just a summary of what I had already covered. So it's time to deliver value. So you've gotten that all important email that says, congratulations, we would like to talk to you in person, or currently, I think most of them will be doing virtual meetings. You have to be ready. You have to be prepared. You have to prepare for a virtual interview with as much effort as you would do for a face-to-face -face interview. Everything makes a difference. We will share with you some tips on how to make yourself look a lot better for a virtual interview. But there are other things you need to be mindful of, such as your body language, whether or not you have done thorough research of the organization, their history, their vision, their mission, what exactly are their values, where are they headed for the next two to three years? How has the current pandemic situation affected their business and industry? All of these things are vital information that will be used by you when you're answering the questions. Know the difference between traditional and behavioral questions. And that we will cover in the interview part of the program. Prepare answers for commonly asked questions. So what are some very common questions? The first one, why did you leave your previous employer? The second one is what do you hope to achieve in this new organization? The next one, where do you see yourself three to five years down the road? 
So it's important to prepare at least some stock answers that you're able to share with the employer when they ask them. Now it's about following up. Hopefully you've done a fairly good interview. Next, we have to follow up. As I mentioned, some clients or employers do not want you to follow up at all. Others, in fact, leave this as a test to see your eagerness and keenness to get back. So a little appreciation never hurt anyone, did it? So send at least a thank you email immediately after the interview. Share one or two things that you picked up from the interview. Try to draw back the attention to the useful questions they had asked to kind of show that you were really paying attention in the interview. It's also okay to ask for some feedback on what you did well and where you can further improve. Who knows? Not every employer will reply, but if you do get some response, that is better than no response. And from that, you begin to fine tune and improve how you strategize for your job search. So in totality, there are these five areas you can look at from generating opportunities, to qualifying them, to demonstrating your value through a good resume and cover letter, and then delivering the value in an interview, as well as following up. These are the various things that you need to be good at in order to be able to get a job. Very often when candidates get stuck, we use this model to troubleshoot, to see where exactly the issues may be. And if you notice, the generating opportunities is the broadest and the widest category. So it's about how resilient we are and how open we are in trying to find new opportunities. And as they said, you should not put all your eggs in one basket. So I've had candidates who only use one job portal and they try for months without any result. Obviously, it's not working. So diversify. Look at different platforms. Look at different things that you can do to generate those opportunities. So with that, we are concluding module five on job search strategies. See you in the next one.